being prey. Over time, the whopper fish becomes dangerously unhealthy, stunted, and toxic. Worldwide efforts to clean up mercury are helping, monitoring metal manufacturing and curbing mercury-based products, all giving monster fish like the mako a chance to reach truly monster proportions. Among the planet's mightiest whoppers, hulking and huge, they glide through the water like behemoth battleships. The Goliath Grouper. Goliath groupers live up to their name. Colossal cousins to the sea bass, Goliaths are the West Atlantic's largest groupers. These whoppers grow as long as surfboards. Record Goliaths have topped the scales at nearly 700 kilos, stretching almost two and a half meters. These guys are like swimming foam booths sometimes. They're just huge. The Goliath's super size is a monster survival advantage. Powered by hunting instincts, giant Goliaths are fiercely territorial and hungry. Fish, shellfish, and even sea turtles who swim into Goliath turf fast become food. And as for predators, Goliaths get so big, they outsize hunting barracudas and sharks. Only the largest predator even attempts a Goliath kill. For anglers, tackling a Goliath grouper's a tough test, fighting a mammoth fish that won't quit. December 11, 2004. Fishing Mega, San Carlos Bay, Florida. Professional fishing guides Nelson Diaz and Ben Chancey set out together with only one species in mind, Goliath grouper. <laughs> and the men know there's only one place to go. The Sanibel Causeway Bridge, Goliath's stomping ground. Here, these territorial fish take advantage of concrete pylons, ideal cover for ambushing prey. Soon after the bait hits the water, the angler feels a tug so powerful, it almost pulls him overboard. Nelson's convinced. Only a Goliath can pull so hard, so fast. When you first get the hit, they just, it's just a pull. It breaks, it's really, it's, your body is just going, like, I can't do this anymore. You know, you're just stressed out. Anchoring his feet against the railing, bearing down on the rod, Nelson tries to stay put, but he's losing ground fast. Come on, Cap, come on, come on, Cap. Come on, come on, you can do it, you can do it. Something's gonna break, you're gonna get pulled into the water. The angler pulls on the reel hard as he can. The Goliath won't budge. It's a risky situation. Any moment, the line could snap from rubbing against the ragged concrete block. You have to get the fish out. If you don't get the fish out of the structure, they're going to break you off. Nelson refuses to quit. He's convinced he just has to get the boat and the fish further away from the bridge. But as the anglers navigate past the pylons, the strategy to lure the fish from its hiding place works too well. The Goliath follows them and keeps going, swimming all the way under the boat. Now, to stay hooked, Nelson has to do fishing gymnastics. As the line strains under the whopper's weight, the fisherman gathers his strength and gives a yank. It takes an epic struggle, but he's got it. Nelson pulls the Goliath to the surface. It's huge. Ah, God. 
Yet a new battle's just begun. The fishermen want to measure the monster specimen alive, but the monster has no intention of giving in. The Goliath thrashes and slaps. Using an instrument called a boca grip, the angler corrals the fighting fish. Nelson grabs hold of a fleshy lip. I just grabbed his lip, and it was really like, that was his lip. And it was like grabbing like a big two by four or something. Pulling the grouper into the boat at last. And once we slid him in the boat, we like, could actually really see how big he was. It was amazing. The measurements are jaw-dropping, over two meters long and nearly two meters around, plus an estimated 300 kilos. Before releasing it back into the water, home video footage captures the catch of a career. Just couldn't wait to get pictures and, you know, because that was my biggest fish, you know, I ever got there. Here she goes. Yet, this supersized species is fighting for its survival. Goliath groupers are considered critically endangered. What does such a dangerous designation mean? For an animal to change its status, we can look at population density. So not just simply the number of animals, but their distribution. Before extinction, there are four alarming rungs on the preservation ladder. International organizations calculate factors like total population, rates of decline, and habitat threats. Once a species is in trouble, it graduates from near-threatened to vulnerable, from vulnerable to endangered, and then to the worst scenario, critically endangered. Efforts like fishing bans to save the Goliath have helped the species start to rebound. The ultimate goal? Goliaths reaching the bottom rung of conservation. Least concern. Among the world's biggest monster fish, some are more than just huge. They're lethal. These masters of camouflage can kill with the flick of a whip. The stingray. You may not even see it there. And if you do see it, probably the last thing you're going to think is, this animal's going to be dangerous. And then, bam, you've been popped, just like that. Stingrays are a gargantuan group. Seventy race species inhabit the planet. Diverse race species may be members of different fish families, but many share classic ray traits. And among them all, the biggest whoppers are the manta rays weighing nearly 1,400 kilos with wingspans long as nine meters. And mantas aren't the only monsters. Short tail rays can easily weigh over 300 kilos. And with a nearly two meter length, their total surface area can add up to four square meters. Big as an office cubicle. Bottom-skimming rays are passive feeders with an edge. Some rays filter plankton and small fish, shellfish, or krill into their downturned jaws. But when they want more, they can turn their mouths into vacuum cleaners, sucking up prey hidden under the sand. Rays can also keep their heads and bodies virtually buried in sand without suffocating. They feed off the bottom but they actually breathe through the top. Two big holes on the top of their body. Sort of our nostrils went right around to the back of our head so that we can inhale through, the, or we can inhale through there and blow it out through our mouth. And when threatened, with the flick of a tail whip, a stingray becomes an assassin. Jagged tail barbs connect to a venom gland near the base of the spine. As the tail makes contact, the barb embeds or shreds the unlucky victim, causing searing pain or worse. Piercing arteries, even bone, causing toxic shock and sometimes death. It's almost like a combination of having a whip on the back that you can kind of like Zora, you could crack it at your enemies like that, but the tip of it, the tip of it actually is safe. 
it all adds up to a powerful monster fish. For fishermen who take them on, a Whopper Stingray is a tough test of strength. The smallest Stingray in the world will give you one heck of a fight when you're trying to pull something through the water that's shaped like an airplane. August 10, 2007, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel, Virginia. On a mission to catch a whopper, avid angler Jason Bell stakes out a prime spot on the nearly 200 meter long Seagull Pier, a fishing hotspot projecting anglers far out and nine meters above the bay. Scanning the waters, Jason casts his baited line. Setting the line to free spool, the angler props the fishing rod against the pier's railing and briefly turns away. Suddenly, the reel starts to wail. Gripping the rod tight as he can, Jason's never felt a drag this strong. Basically, it felt like I really hooked a submarine. The long fishing rod bends dangerously towards the water. At any moment, it could snap. All at once, the water's surface breaks. A dark mass moves and ripples below. The angler recognizes the shape, a whopper ray. I could see like a big old brown diamond shape thing swimming on the water and instantly I knew it was a stingray. Jason gets a glimpse, but not enough to determine the fish's full size. The ray dives down deeper. The anglers worry the stingray might bury itself on the sandy bottom. If he would have ever got on the bottom, I would have never gotten him up. But the stingray has other plans. The fish pulls his line all the way under and out the other side of the pier, dangerously close to the cement pylons where the thin line could fray. In a desperate move, Jason locks the reel. It's a risky maneuver. The ray can't pull out any more line. But with the added tension, the thin filament is in greater danger of breaking. The fisherman holds tight. His arms are near the breaking point. Gathering his strength, Jason manages to reel the ray back to his side of the pier. Success! But it's only half the battle. The ray's still deep underwater. To get it to the surface, Jason has to hoist the flapping stingray straight up. It's tougher than lifting dead weight. When you're pulling a bucket through the water, it has a lot of water resistance, just because of the sheer mass, uh, the sheer size of the fish. After a backbreaking 60 minutes, Jason gets the whopper ray to the surface with a powerful heat. He can't believe his eyes. It's even bigger than he imagined. But as he struggles to pull the ray out of the water, the angler realizes it's impossible. He needs more muscle, fast. He calls out to a bystander who rushes in to help, using a gaff and rope to hook the ray. Once it's gaffed, Jason throws down his rod. Together, the men fight a bloody tug of war, literally. As I was pulling up on the rope, it was cutting right through the palm of my hand just because it was so heavy. For this phenomenal fish, they're going to need even more brawn. Incredibly, it takes four men, eight arms, and many long minutes to hoist the ray. At last, they've done it. The men get the Leviathan onto the dock. Mission accomplished. It's a monster, weighing 126 kilos. The stingrays nearly two meters across, stretching over one and a half meters long. 
As Jason's photo shows, it's bigger than a car's hood. A pending world record for the largest stingray caught on rod and reel. It's the biggest thing I've ever caught. It's fought me longer than anything I caught. Around the world, stingrays are often feared. Yet ironically, in the future, the same toxic trait that makes these fish so frightening may become their greatest asset to species protection, their venom. Stingray venom may have healing powers. Crossing the line from poison to potion may come down to quality versus quantity. Too much stingray venom can cause muscle contractions and seizures. But in the right doses, new research tests if the same poisonous protein can be used to treat serious illness. From dangerous to life-saving, further proof of the importance of protecting big fish like mighty, remarkable rays. In the world of whoppers, they're like long-distance submarines. And when it's time to hunt, this swimming fleet becomes a battalion, the northern bluefin tuna. They just swarm in and attack their prey, and the prey might just explode out of the water they move so quickly. Kilo for kilo, bluefin are some of the biggest fish to roam the open ocean. Whopper bluefin have tipped the scales at 680 kilos, stretching over four meters. But unlike most big fish, behemoth bluefin roam in packs. They're the largest bony fish to swim in schools. Unusual behavior for animals big enough to survive solo, yet it's extremely smart. Schooling creates a dense mass of shimmering bodies underwater, deterring predators like sharks, who find it much harder to penetrate and charge a shifting and fast-moving gang. They don't just have the advantage of strength and numbers, they have well, truly, they have stealth and intelligence in numbers to respect. And when it comes to the hunt, schooling bluefin become a deadly swarm, executing maneuvers en masse, attacking prey like a brigade. If bluefin had a killer's credo, it'd be all for one. They're really about the only schooling fish we know of that works cooperatively. They corral around almost like a football team. They all have a role to play, but they're all working towards the same goal, and that goal is getting dinner. For anglers, chasing down these schooling hunters can push even a pro to the edge of endurance. Once a bluefin tuna is actually on the line, look out, you're looking for quite a fight. June 24th, 2007. Famous fishing hub, Virginia Beach, Virginia. Experienced angler Bo Haycox, his father and friends, set out on an expedition, hoping to catch a big marlin. Soon after dropping their lines, they spot a commotion on the port side, a whopping splash. They're Sean! Sean! The anglers realize it's a double whammy. Got it. All right, come on, come on. Simultaneously, two rods, Bose and his father Rick's, bend down with a powerful tug. Each man's hooked a monster fish. Two rods just came down. Bam! At that moment, Rick's line suddenly breaks off in a snap. He's lost his whopper catch. Bo's determined not to lose his. What started as a two-man fight is now down to one. For maximum leverage, Bo quickly climbs into the fishing chair. His reel is screaming. By now, the fish has taken out so much line, Bo only has about 90 meters left. It's super-sized and strong. We knew it was a huge fish. It was probably about 300 yards away, so we didn't know quite what we had. 
One thing Bo does know, landing this fighting fish will take all the strength he's got. There's nothing I could do but just hold on and let him go. The exhausting tug of war wears on. Bo bucks and strains in the fishing chair. Father Rick has a trick to make it easier for his son. He pours liquid soap onto the seat, allowing Bo to slide without getting stuck. But Bo's fish shows no sign of letting up. The angler's body's aching, yet he hangs on for an incredible three hours. Neither man nor beast is willing to give up. I didn't want to fight him anymore, but I wanted to get the fish. Bo's stamina's at the breaking point. He tries any strategy to increase pressure on his line. He puts a glove on his hand to clutch the reel without cutting his flesh. It's a battle, and, and it's you against the fish, you want to win. Of course, he wants to win, too. Then, after four back-breaking hours, Bo's determination pays off. There it is! Oh. The fish surfaces in a rush. Get ready. It's no marlin. It's a bluefin tuna. The biggest he's ever reeled in. Oh yeah, pretty work, buddy. When he came up to the surface, I mean, I think all of us were like, oh my gosh, this is a big fish. Woo. Yeah, that's a big bluefin there. It takes all hands on deck to hoist the whopper on board. At last, they've got it. That's great, we got it. You got it? Got it. Bro, this might be a new state record. Examining the tuna, they think it might be a record catch. The skipper grabs the radio and calls friends ashore, sharing the news. They've got a monster. Ended up being, they said, you got 100, however, 100 inch fish, you, you got it. Great work, bro, good job! At the docks, a huge crowd's gathered. It takes 10 men to lift the giant tuna. The mega catch stretches an astounding 2.7 meters long, weighs 259 kilos, and measures nearly two meters around. A record breaker, Virginia State's largest bluefin tuna catch. But what future do bluefin face? Around the world, commercial fishing and pollution are threatening bluefin survival. One solution may come down to a groundbreaking idea, turning this wild species into a healthy, sustainable crop. The challenges are immense. In order to reproduce sustainable species, you need to be able to spawn, gather, and fertilize their eggs for successful reproduction. But wild bluefin are considered extremely difficult to tame and breed. That is, until now. Though it's still challenging science, successful tuna farms in South Australia and Japan are leading the way to captive breeding. Intensive research has fueled critical innovations, including captive bluefin breeding from eggs. Scientists have safely captured wild bluefin and set up closely monitored sea cages that allow them to induce spawning, even creating usable eggs that may hatch under man-made conditions, all part of protecting this endangered monster fish. In the most extreme fishing quests, some monster fish are among the most prized catches on Earth. The tarpon, ancient survivors, strong, tenacious, a tough test of skill and will. For one former U.S. president and an Olympic athlete, the ultimate battle of man versus whopper. This tarpon is just huge thrill because of his size and his majesty and the beauty. It was just great. Atlantic tarpon are prehistoric predators dating back 300 million years. Part of their epic survival comes down to mammoth proportions. Longer than bathtubs, whopper shimmery silver tarpon can stretch two and a half meters and weigh over 130 kilos. These are enormous fish. They're like escalades covered in chrome, just cruising through the shallows of the Gulf waters. 
And they're huge fighters, very strong fish. One advantage to growing huge is a mouth built like an armored trap. Tarpon jaws are connected at the throat by a bony plate and held together by ligaments and muscle. Their bony mouths literally work like snapping traps, helping tarpon catch, crush, and devour fast-moving prey with powerful force. But for anglers, penetrating these bony jaws is one of the biggest tests in sport fishing. Most hooks simply fall flat against these crushing maws. And if an angler's lucky enough to penetrate a chink in the tarpon's armor, he's in for a fight. Hang on. Famed anglers have taken on tarpon for generations. Herbert Hoover was a tarpon fishing fan. And in 1937, Franklin Delano Roosevelt and his boatmates reeled in an 80-pound Texas tarpon. And the latest leader to battle this formidable fish? See that breaking water out there? 41st President George Herbert Walker Bush is a self-described fishing fanatic, an avid angler for 80 years, a childhood passion that began here at his Kennebunkport, Maine home. Even anglers accustomed to dealing with affairs of state embrace fishing's conquests, R&R, and family bonding. And in our family, we do it with the different generations. That's my beloved daughter. That one is the President of the United States fishing with his father. But the thing I love about this one is it shows the shows that you don't have to get that lure out there. That'll show you two generations, enthusiasm of 